David Axelrod once described Jamie Calvin as one of the most important journalists you've probably never heard of. If there is still someone who hasn't heard about Jamie's journalism, it's probably because, most of all, he's a human rights activist, a transparency crusader, a community builder, and a bricklayer for democracy. He's just moonlighting as a journalist. Tonight, we honor the whole package of Jamie. Jamie is one of the most important journalists in Chicago ever. He broke the story that helped set in motion what we hope will become the most significant police reform in the city's history. Then he published a groundbreaking, mind-blowing series about the code of silence. He showed that the code isn't just about rogue cops covering one another's backs. It's a well-oiled machine in which officers don't report misconduct because they fear reprisal, and telling the truth requires great courage. By describing how that system operates, Jamie gave us all the power to fix it. Jamie gives us the raw material we need to build a democracy. He won a court battle to establish a principle that is as radical as it is self-evident. Police misconduct records belong to the public. The Then, with his colleagues at the Invisible Institute, he created the biggest database of police misconduct complaints in the country. That database helps to uncover patterns of abuse and identify where supervision and oversight are failing. It gives us the tools we need to hold public institutions accountable. And Jamie is a community builder. At the Stateway Gardens Public Housing Development, he provided jobs to young men who were looking for a way out of a gang or a better way forward after returning home from prison. As Stateway was being demolished, Jamie helped residents to build the community that would take its place. And Jamie's articles about Stateway introduced us to people who were all too often rendered invisible and ensured that we saw their dignity and their humanity. In fact, all of Jamie's work challenges us and helps us develop a more expansive and embracing notion of our own community. On a personal note, uh, I have a great job. And over the last 20 years, uh, I'd have to say that conspiring with Jamie has been one of the most uh, thought-provoking, delight-inducing, uh, and uh, hope-creating things that I've had the good fortune to do. So for his courageous journalism, his devotion to writing and justice, his support for democratic systems, and his commitment to an expansive vision of community, I give you Jamie Calvin, BPI 27, Champion of the Public Interest. This award has special meaning for me for three reasons. Uh, because I receive it from my dear friend and co-conspirator Adam Gross because it's bestowed by BPI, an organization with which I've had a long, productive relationship, and because I have the honor of sharing it with Lori Lightfoot. So I trust you won't think me ungrateful under the circumstances if I claim a writer's prerogative and interrogate the name of the award. Um, among, among the definitions of the word champion is, quote, a person who has defeated or surpassed all rivals in a competition. I, I recognize that there's another definition closer to BPI's intended meaning of someone who, quote, fights for a cause or on behalf of someone else. But the two meanings are not wholly independent, and the word inevitably carries the aura of exceptional achievement. I want to contest that. I want to complicate it because I don't think it captures the intensely collaborative nature of the work that I and many in this room do. A quarter of a century ago, as I set out on the path that continues to unfold before me, I wrote these words in one of the first grant proposals, but not the last I ever wrote. 
there are conversations, both public and private, we urgently need to have about the constellation of issues, race, poverty, violence, we associate with the inner city. But we lack both the relationships and the language to have those conversations. The relationships, if they ever existed, have atrophied, and the language has been depleted by the ways we have abused it." End quote. The first order of business, I went on to argue, is to build relationships and recover language as a resource. The task, as I understood it then, and I understand it now, is to figure out what it might mean to conduct oneself as a neighbor under conditions of urban apartheid. That's how I see my work, both as a writer and as a citizen, and that's how I see the larger democratic project as a matter of creating the conditions for us to have necessary conversations and argues, arguments with one another. So I stand before you today less as a sovereign individual, as a champion, um, than as the beneficiary of a rich, sustaining, collaborative ecosystem. I've presumed to annotate this award in order to make a larger point that is, I believe, relevant to the theme of the evening. We live in a broken city, variously described as a crisis of public safety and a crisis of police accountability. Our current situation is best understood as a crisis of the civil order. It's perilous. It also represents an extraordinary opportunity to achieve enduring social change with respect to the blood knot of racial inequality enforced by violence that deforms American life. We will only be able to fully realize this possibility if we renew our democratic practices. Our elected officials will not lead us to the promised land, nor can we rely on champions from civil society to deliver us. It's up to us as citizens and neighbors to take personal responsibility and work together to ensure that funda fundamental human rights are respected and abuses are addressed. That's the nature of this historic moment in Chicago. That's the challenge at hand, and that's the spirit in which I accept this generous and heartening award. <laughs>